Good evening, it's Thursday. Welcome along to Inside the Hive. We are live for the next hour from Vicarage Road and we've got lots on the way for you. We're going to look ahead to the Burnley game this weekend here, of course, here at Vicarage Road. We're going to hear from Juraj Kutzke ahead of that game. Coming up Sunday here at Vicarage Road is a massive game for the Golden Girls as they take on Coventry City. So we're going to look forward to that as well. We're going to hear from Shaq Ford, his journey from academy to the first team and Jeremy Ngakia takes on the 62nd Challenge. As always, we want you to be part of the show, so make sure you send your questions in. You know how to do that by now. If you're watching on YouTube, just pop them into the comments section below. And of course, you can ask your questions on Twitter as well. Use that hashtag of Inside the Hive. Now, as always, I can't do this show on my own, so we're joined as ever by the legend that is Mr. Tommy Mooney. Tommy, how are you? Very well, thank you. Good evening. Good to have you with us. How has uh, your week been? Golf this week? Yes, we had the club golf day at the Grove on Monday. Nice. Very good day, actually. Really? I hear a rumour that we're lucky to have you here with us still and you're not injured from Monday. I did have a near-death experience. <laughs> On a par three, <laughs> I've hit it, 203 yards, I've hit it to about six, seven feet short of, the, short of the flag. Troy Deeney, Richard Johnson, Tommy Smith are just on the fringe of the green. And I'm thinking, I need to birdie this because if I win closest to the pin then I'm going to get some stick if I don't birdie it. So I'm looking at the, my ball. Didn't realise that Jono was hitting his ball. He's completely knifed it. It's flew past me at 100 mile an hour, just past my neck. I've obviously covered both of my the important areas. delicate areas. Yeah. Um, and I've heard it whistle past my, my neck. <laughs> Tommy Smith was, was just checking to see if I was okay. Turned round, Richard Johnson and Troy Deeney were rolling on the floor, killing themselves laugh, laughing. And that lasted for about three holes. They just couldn't stop laughing. And how, how did it, did you, did you finish it? Did you get it in two? No, I didn't. I missed the birdie putt. But it was, it was a traumatic experience. <laughs> did you recall, call the, were you on the floor calling the physio? Medic, it was, it was a very traumatic experience. It was like a bullet going past my ear. Well, but we did finish third in the competition, so... That's right, and I'm glad you're in one piece. Thank you. Which is good. Uh, joining me and Tommy on the show tonight is an incredibly well-decorated footballing legend. He played for Watford for just one season, but he's won three Champions Leagues. Uh, we're delighted to say joining us all the way tonight virtually is Filippo Gali. Uh, Filippo, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me tonight. It's a great pleasure uh, to it's, be... It's, to be with you, with Tommy, Mooney, the legend, and you. <laughs> All right, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, look, let's get stuck into some of your memories. We're going to dig into your career here at Watford a little bit later on in the show. But of course, playing here at Vicarage Road, um, how special was it for you to come and play in England and to play here at Watford? Uh, as I already uh, as I already told um, some many times, uh, many times. For me, it was uh, a, a dream, like a dream come true, because I always loved the, the loved the English atmosphere, the English football atmosphere. So, uh, to sign for Watford for really was really something uh, unbelievable to me. And uh, to came to Vicarage Road was fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, the, the the season was a disappointing season, but to me. To play in in England, to play for Watford was a, was was great. It was an experience that I I will really uh, remember for forever. And obviously, we can we can tell that you're obviously at Palmer now, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little yeah. bit about that a little bit later on see? in the show. <laughs> we can see. I like it. It's good. It's good. We've had some uh, we've had some interesting backgrounds on the show this year, but yours, I like it. Yours is very very nice. Um, Tommy, now of course you left Watford at the end of the season before, um, but you guys played against each other. We did, Filippo. Yeah, I, d I didn't really want to remind you of it, but Michael insisted. Did you score? Did, did you just score eh? Did you I, score? I, I scored two actually. It makes it even <laughs> worse. But it was at St Andrews Sorry, against sorry. Birmingham City. <laughs> yeah, I, we were we lost three 0 in Birmingham. Three, I think it was three two, but mine were the two important goals. Ah, yeah, we got, yeah, well, got because, because we came back, we came back at the end of the first hour was three nil. That you might be right. I don't remember it that well. We've had no, to I do it. I remember that day, that day, because uh, uh, something's uh, very funny, funny even if we were three nil down into the the changing room that I can't tell you uh, <laughs> in this program. But we were three nil down. We were like, uh, you know, uh, 
Viali was really upset to, 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 the, to, the, to the player. And he was shouting at, uh, at us. But OK, I, I have to stop, please. But I remember <laughs> that the second half, we, we came back. And OK, we lost. Yeah. Well, look, Filippo, we're looking forward to getting uh, more of your memories a little bit later on in the show as well. We've got some, uh, some great fan questions coming your way as well. Um, but first of all, let's uh, have a discussion about the season. Of course, uh, five games to go. Uh, Burnley is up next, of course, this Saturday. Then we've got Crystal Palace on Saturday the 7th for that big game against Everton, of course, here at Vicarage Road. Then it's Leicester and then we finish the season uh, at Chelsea away. Tommy, we, we kind of said last week ahead of that Man City game that, you know, Man City, Chelsea, they're, they're kind of games where that they're free hits almost just come out of it with a good performance. We mentioned last week there's four winnable games coming up now in a row. Um, starts at Burnley. How important is it to get something out of this game on Saturday? Well, it's vitally important because, you know, we know that the math mathematical problem that we're in in the league table, it's just vital that we have some sort of performance and the players go into a winning dressing room after the game this week to give themselves hope. And if they need convincing, that we can stay in this division, it has to start with a win at, at Burnley. Obviously, I was at the game at, on Saturday at Manchester City. They were a pleasure to watch, I have to say. And there was times where, where Watford, I mean, we could have got back in the game far earlier. Emmanuel Dennis had a one-on-one -on -one in the first half. And then Kamara gets his goal and, you know, everybody thinks, yes, we've, we, we've got back level. They, they were quiet at times, but for, for the most part, they were brilliant, Manchester City. If we're to be rele relegated, it's not because we lose at Manchester City and Chelsea and Liverpool. It's because we haven't won in, in, against the teams in and around us. Well, Saturday we've got a chance because, you know, Burnley are in good form. Um, but we have to start that winning run and it has to be, it has to be four wins. Mm -hmm. uh, Filippo, when you're playing against a team that obviously needs to get a result just as much as you do. When we look at Burnley, of course, they've just uh, sacked Sean Dyche. They've, they've got a caretaker manager in at the moment. They've had a little bit of a bounce uh, fr from that. Um, how difficult is it playing against a team that have got that new manager bounce? It's, it's always a bit difficult, no? because uh, when you change, your, uh, you change the, the manager, uh, it seems that uh, something can, uh, can be better, can, something can change. There is a new a new boost into the into the, the changing room, uh, into the, the the entire environment. So, but I, I think uh, as Tommy Mooney uh, said, uh, uh, water has to win, has to win in order to maintain the the, the hope to not be relegated. And uh, Manchester City is a uh, is a team that. Uh, uh, what we cannot cope with, but uh, Burnley, I think uh, we can we can win, uh, and then uh, we can at least uh, uh, get three points that can um, give us uh, um, hope and uh, new new strength. Filippo, did you approach games differently when obviously when, when you're playing well and things are going well, you're on a good run and you go in for winning things. It's, I, I used to find it easier to play football in those situations. Did you approach games differently and, and, and rank them in order or did you just do everything the same? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are some games that um, uh, the, 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 the motivation uh, that comes... Uh, Easily, no. When you, when I was at Milan, when you play the Derby, when you play Juventus, uh, uh, but uh, what is sometimes very difficult is to uh, give the best of yourself uh, when you play with some teams that uh, um, the people con in general consider them uh, not uh, not very very good teams, and it seems so easy to to face uh, to. To face them, um, it, it, it's, that's it's uh, quite uh, quite quite difficult. Uh, but uh, uh, one of my strength was really to be focused in in every in every game. So uh, doesn't matter if uh, I had to play with uh, uh, with Man City when I was at uh, Watford uh, or uh, uh, Walsall, no, uh, with the respect of all the clubs, of course. 
so to me to me was was e easy uh, to be focused uh, i i i haven't i wasn't a, a, a player a, very, a skillful player but to be focused was was one of my uh, strength well we need lots of focus at the weekend uh, let's get a view from inside the first team dressing room right now then because we can hear it from your Kutska. And do you think that uh, it's still possible to stay in the Premier League for next season? Sì, possibilità c'è, solo che lo dobbiamo come cioè dobbiamo trovarla anche quella sicurezza di giocare in campo e credere vincere quelle partite poi dopo Speranza c'è anche possibilità perché matem matematicamente ancora si può, cioè, si può salvare, ma ci dobbiamo cambiare un po' qualcosa. And how have you found playing in the Premier League? Da, 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 cioè, mi, sto, mi sto godendo questo momento perché ormai non sono, non sono più giovane, e non so quanti, quanti stagioni ancora posso fare in Premier, quindi. Mi sto godendo questo momento e poi vediamo, cioè sto provando a fare sempre, sempre il mio massimo. So che non è sempre così, ma cioè questo è calcio, non, non sempre riusciamo a fare la migliore partita come possiamo, quindi diciamo che mi sto godendo questo momento e sperando che ci salviamo, che così possiamo fare anche, posso fare anche l'altro. As you mentioned, you're, you're 35 now. How much longer do you think you will play football? No, lo so. Non ci penso a questo, cioè quanto ancora resisto. Cioè vado finché, finché riesco, finché mi danno la possibilità o qua o dall'altra parte e continuo a gio di giocare. O finché sto, sto sano, cioè gioco. There we go. Thoughts of uh, Uri Kutska there ahead of the match at the weekend against Burnley. Uh, now, Filippo, of course, uh, you've come across uh, Uri before with your time at Parma. Uh, well, uh, I came across uh, Uri even in, when he was at uh, C Milan and I was the director of the, the youth sector. And then I met him here in uh, the beginning of the season. Yes, he was here. And by the way, his Italian is better than my English. <laughs> um, that's true <laughs> talking to someone else you know of course uh, Ray Lewington of course who's uh, helping Roy Hodgson out here at the moment um, as well um, he was here when you were at Watford yeah uh, I met him uh, it was uh, it was a uh, a, a great uh, a great man it was like uh, uh, the 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 eldest brother no For, to me because uh, it was really close to the players uh, and uh, and it was uh, really helpful. Yeah, no, massively. And Tommy, final word going into this Burnley game at the weekend, of course. Um, your eye obviously is going to be up for it. The players have got to be up for it as well. Um, what do you think Roy's mentality is going to be going into this game at the end of the day? How do you, how do you think he's attacking this week, obviously off the back of that Man City game? I think his, his method will be exactly the same as every other game. They will work from a, a, a defensive structure. What he'll want from the game, though, is his forward and attacking players to go and, and, and free the chains that they've been playing within the last two months, three months. They have to just go and attack this Burnley team. You know, up until a couple of weeks ago, they were in a worse position of, than we were. They've found a little bit of form with the change in, in manager. Uh, and they've got a little bit of a momentum. That doesn't mean they're a Manchester City or a Chelsea or a Liverpool. They're not. So we have to take our game to them. But I do think that, that Roy's method will be exactly the same. We stay solid. We try and uh, capture the middle of the pitch. And then when we go forward, we have to go forward with pace and confidence. Where that confidence comes from is the hardest thing to get because th there's only so much you can practice on the training ground. But that's what we need. No, massively. So not one, but two massive games coming up here at Vicarage Road this weekend. Of course, the Golden Girls will be in action on Sunday as well. They're taking on Coventry City. They need at least a point to secure safety in the championship. Now, a little bit earlier on, Amber Stobbs and... Uh, and uh, <coughs> 
I've totally gone mind blank. Two of, the, two of the women's team coming a little bit earlier on. I don't often do this live on television, forget the name, I guess. How bad's that? Uh, here's where the women came in a little bit earlier on. Andrea, Amber, great to have you here with us on the show. Uh, Amber, I think you're the first guest we've had on twice now oh, this yes. year. So thanks for coming back. Well, thanks for the invite. Uh, it's good to have you both here with us. Um, look, massive game coming up on Sunday. Uh, how are you both feeling ahead of this one? I'm feeling really excited. Um, we knew early on the season this is going to be the last fixture. Always looking forward to it, especially at the Vic. Uh, we didn't necessarily know the circumstances we'll be playing it under. But if anything, it's just making me... Uh, want to get after it more and especially the team uh, this week we've had a really good week in training um, and yeah just really excited. And I suppose Andrew as well playing a Vicarage Road for this game as well that adds a bit more to it as well. Um, yeah um, like Amber just said the morale in training has been brilliant this week so hopefully the girls rise to the occasion and we're certainly looking forward to it. No, for sure. So for anyone who doesn't know the permutations and how this is kind of looking, let's bring up the kind of league table for us to have a little look at here. So this is the FA Women's Championship. Uh, Coventry currently sit bottom. Uh, we're just above them. Uh, so basically, a win or a draw is enough to, to stay in the league. Amber, we spoke at the start of the season that, you know, we always knew this was going to be a tough year. It's a transitional year. Um, to be in this position now, obviously, it's, I'm sure you'd all have to be a bit further up the table, but it's in your hands. You, you've got a chance to control this situation. Yeah, definitely. Like when we spoke, I had uh, full belief in us having uh, a good season in Championship. We knew it was going to be tough with the challenges and the changes that you face coming up. Um, and I've always backed us to stay in this league and I still back us to stay in this league. If we do what we're, we can do and what we're capable of on Sunday, we're in the league. And again, like you said, um, it's a draw minimum, but we're not. No one's going to settle for that. Um, and of course, we want to go out with a bang and all three points would mm. what and, we're and aiming for. And performances wise over the last few weeks as well, you know, you've been, you've been picking up points since January as well, which has been great. It's been good seeing those performances have been improving as well, which you must be all delighted with. Uh, yeah, so I made my debut at um, Vic last time and we actually beat London City. Right. Um, so hopefully again this weekend we pick up three points. And like Sobsy just said, we're not, I don't think anyone's going to settle for a draw, but Obviously, as you just saw on the table, that we'll take a draw to stay up. Mm. Um, but fair play to Coventry for coming back and getting 10 points deducted. Um, but yeah, it will certainly be a good game and hopefully all our fans will be behind us. Yeah, no, massively. And how have you found the opposition this year? Obviously, there's, there's some teams that have uh, got experience in this league. Obviously, we're adapting and learning to it. Amber, if you have, how have you found the, <coughs> the level of competition in this league this year? Um, it's probably my fifth season at this level. Um, and it's getting tougher and tougher <coughs> each year. I don't think you could um, kind of predict a score or, or a winner before any game in the championship. Um, obviously, Liverpool have flown away with it. Uh, but I think it's unpredictable. We know that it's unpredictable. Um, and that's why we go into every game with a game plan that we need to stick to, we need to do. Um, but yeah, it's been a tough year. Uh, competition's increased and yeah, it's just been tough. Mm. Obviously, mentioning focusing on, on what you can do, the morale you said obviously in training has been good this week. Everyone's rallying around, around that, which is obviously really, really important. How important is it to, to focus on your performance in a game like this rather than, you know, sometimes when you look at tables and look at opposition, you think, oh, well, if they have a bit of an off day, they're, they're weaknesses. How important is it that you, that you focus on your strengths as a team going into this um, one? I think when it's a relegation battle, it's so different. So if it's a normal game, obviously, you know how the team that you're going to play up against, how they play. But when it's down to one game, I feel like both teams are just going to go for it. So obviously, tactically this weekend, whoever gets it right will win the game. And obviously, like we've mentioned and like you just said, like this week has been spot on in training and you can really feel the buzz within the camp. So like I said, we're going to rise to the occasion and obviously we're going to put everything out there on Sunday. Yeah, no, massively. And obviously, <coughs> just over what, 48 hours to go now until that game. Um, how are you both feeling about it? Do you just want to get on with it now? Are you ready for it or are you kind of looking forward to training tonight and bits and pieces? Are you looking to forward to it? To be fair, I'm, re I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. If it was tomorrow, I'd take it. But um, it's, I'm also not ready for the season to finish mm -hmm. in general. So looking forward to training tonight, looking forward to being around the girls and being around the group and making the most out of, like you said, the 48 hours that we've got. It's gone so quick. Um, it's, it's a bit of a shock that after Sunday, like that this year's done um so gonna kind of bide my time and enjoy it mm. what does the next 48 hours look like obviously training tonight but what does the rest of the week look like for you two now uh, so we'll have training this evening and obviously do our final prep for the weekend um 
but it's just that over the weekend, obviously, we'll carb up, <laughs> um, make sure that we're obviously ready to go on Sunday for the, it's basically going to be a war. So we're both ready for it. We're both physical players and I'm pumped for it. And I, to be honest, I'm the type of player that I'll just rather get it done with because, you know, I just, like, I'm pumped for it already. So, but like Stobsy said, the season's literally gone so quick and yeah, so. Hmm. I'm sure you'd love it to be a, a match which is contesting for a title, but obviously these high pressure games that games that mean something, I guess you, you must, must love those because there's that extra little bit riding on it. Yeah, I think we're both players that rise to it um, and I've just made a big statement there, so hopefully on the weekend <laughs> we do, but um, it's a cup final at the end of the day. Um, I go into every single game like that though, I hand on heart do, and um, I know that not one of us is going to leave anything on that pitch when we walk off. So uh, it's a cup final and like we said, at the Vic is just incredible. That surface out there is the best I've ever played on. Um, and it's just a massive occasion that these are that we've said as a group, these are the sort of games that you play for. Of course, we prefer it to be kind of a promotion battle or something like that. But football's football. It's not always the way. But these are the days that we're never going to forget. Um, so we want to make it a good one to remember. Well, everyone at the club is certainly behind you. And uh, right now we've got some good luck messages uh, from some of the players. Hi girl, it's Ben Foster here. Just want to say massive good luck for your game against Cov. Hi ladies, it's Musa. So I wanted to wish you good luck for Sunday. I know it's going to be a, a massive game, but uh, give everything and uh, I hope you're going to win and, uh, and stay up. Come on. What for the woman? Good luck for Sunday. Hello all the Watford girls and ladies. I want to wish you all the best of luck for the last game of the season. We believe in you guys. I know you're going to get the result done. So make sure you guys do it and we support you guys all the way. Come on, you want one. Just want to wish you uh, good luck for Sunday, ladies. You're going to do it. Hello, ladies. Big game Sunday. Keep fighting. Go hard. I'm, I'm supporting you. We're all supporting you. All the best, yeah. <laughs> Ciao. Uh, hello, this is Roy Hodgson at the training ground. I just heard the two girls have got a very important game this, this Sunday against Coventry where the result keeps you in the league. So I really do hope that game will go well for you, that you can, you can play well and get the result that I'm sure you're all hoping for and working for. So my thoughts are with you and I wish you all the very, very best of luck. Well, some great messages of support there, including one from uh, the manager, Roy Hodgson, who seems to be following you around, Amber, a little bit. Literally what I said, I was at Palace, um, <laughs> I've left Palace, he's left Palace, yeah. I'm at Watford, he's just, you know, <laughs> creeping up on me, so yeah. yeah. Um, but nice to get those messages from the first team. I think one thing that's really special about this club, that it is, it is a club, it's not just one team, it is everyone. And to have the, have the first team players wishing you luck for the weekend, and special, it's important. Yeah, no, that was lovely. Yeah, and, and our fans have been... At, incredible this season through thick and thin um, and London City we got the win and we've said that plenty of times uh, the 12th player was mm -hmm. kind of the fans and the support so hopefully we'll get that behind us on Sunday and we'll get the job done. Mm. How important is that going to be for you at the weekend having the fans here and getting behind you and supporting you because we've had some great atmospheres for your games here at Vicarage Road and of course at Kings Langley as well. It does make a massive difference. Um, I think you could tell even when the men um, during Covid and they didn't have any supporters there how different the games were with fans and without fans and it's exactly the same for us obviously in women's football we don't get as many but when there is and um, when I played against London City here and it was my debut the fans were incredible um, we obviously won one nil and when the goal went in like how loud yeah. like it was it was unbelievable so we need them again this weekend and well we need them more than ever this weekend um, and they will make a difference for sure yeah, massively. Um, you've got some great senior players on your side as well, players like Helen Ward. But how, how important are they going to be in the dressing room this weekend? And using their experience, obviously Helen being an international as well, she's not, not the only international in the dressing room, but how important are those voices going to be at the weekend? Dre's looking at me because she literally texts me saying we need the experienced players like you. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you didn't say me. Um, but uh, no, yeah, it's, it's massive. Character's everything that this weekend's about. And Helzer's had a fantastic career and she's a real leader. Um, she get us going. Everyone is calm. She, the thing with Helzer is she, she'll get us going, but she's calm and she's confident, um, which I think spreads out where you've got different types of leaders that will do different things. And we've got a lot of them. So um, it's really important to have those characters in the change room. No, yeah, no, massively. Finally, um, there may be fans that are sitting on the fence, do you want to come watch football Sunday, do you want a day with a family Sunday, we want them to kind of come down, it's going to be a great fun day to have everyone there. Uh, what are your message to the fans this weekend to kind of make sure they're here to get behind you, what would you say to them? What's family without football? 
<laughs> Bring your family down. <laughs> My family's coming. <laughs> uh, come down and we will get the three points and we will stay up. Yeah, Amazing. That's a much better message. Football is the winner. Oh, no. <laughs> Football's always the winner. Look, best Football of luck for the, the weekend. Winner. Thank you um, very much. Looking forward to seeing you in the championship next season. Go out there, get the result and uh, we wish you all the best. And thanks so much for coming in. Thank no, you very thank much. You very much. Thank, thank you. you. Great to have Amber and Andrea with us on the show tonight. And best of luck, girls, for the weekend. Uh, right. Massive game this weekend, Tommy. Um, you've played in some big games as well. And so is uh, Filippo, our guest this evening. Um, Filippo, I'm going to start with you because, what is it, I think, five Champions League finals you've played in. You won three of them. Um, how did you get up for a big game? <laughs> uh, well, big games is it's, uh, it's always something that uh, a player's a player want to want to play and uh, I hope that really uh, the girls uh, the Watford girls that can can make it a win and be and not, don't be relegated uh, to prepare a, a, a big game it's, it's it's easy I told you before it's it's really easy because uh, you you your focus uh, uh, there's there's nothing that can be left and so um, the important games, such as a, a Champions League final, uh, to prepare, it's really, it's really easy. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't need uh, the, the coach uh, push uh, you uh, during the training section, uh, and everything is much easier. Then, of course, there is the pitch, <laughs> and uh, and of course the pitch uh, says uh, the truth. If you if you are well prepared. In, uh, in terms of uh, athleticism, uh, uh, technical side, uh, tactical side, uh, then you can succeed. Otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a big problem. And uh, when you when you lose uh, a, a final, a Champions League final, uh, it's really a, a, a big pain. A big pain. Yeah, I bet. And we, we were talking off, obviously, women's football for you at Palmer as well. That's something that, that you help oversee as well in your current role. What, what, what's women's football like at, at Palmer in the league there? Uh, well, uh, I'm involved with the, with the women's sector, uh, both the first team and the youth sector, uh, according to our methodology. methodology sorry. And uh, we are currently in the, the lowest level, so the fourth level. Uh, we are trying to, to, to win... Uh, the championship and get to the Serie C, which is the third, uh, the third level. But uh, the, our owner, the Kraus Group, our president, Kyle Kraus, uh, um, he would like to, to, to buy the license because now in Italy you can, you can get the license uh, from, uh, of, of a club uh, in uh, second division in Serie B or uh, uh, first division Serie A. Um, from the next season, uh, the, the women, the, uh, the women will be professional, will be professionalist because uh, uh, until now uh, they are not uh, professional. From the next season, Serie A only the Serie A, so the, the first level, uh, they will be professional, and most of the club, most of the club, uh, we have only 12 clubs in the first division in Serie A are really scared about the cost of the of the of, of, of the championship uh, uh, transport uh, so uh, it is not that easy and they, some of them uh, they are trying to to, to sell to sell the uh, the license that's why we hope to to, to get uh, in in a, in, a, in the highest uh, uh, level we can for the next season. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, well, it's good I to see that... Clear enough, sorry, yeah, because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, that, well, it's good to see Palmer investing into the women's game. You know, it's really important. It's grown massively over here, so that's really, really good to see. You mentioned, obviously, your role at Palmer. We're going to delve into that a little bit later on, but, of course, that involves helping that next generation. And uh, we've got a great little success story here at the club ourselves, and that's in Shackford. And this is about his journey from the academy to the first team.
when he said he wanted to be a footballer, it's, at such a young age, there's such a long way to go. So you don't put too much emphasis on it. You just make sure that you enjoyed the game. I remember I was playing a game for my local team, Trollywood. One of the parents from the opposite team approached my dad saying that he knows a scout from Watford. And then he's saying he would speak to the scout to Watford to see if I can come down for a few training sessions. Enjoyed it there and done really well. And then he just called me to say, keep coming back. Obviously, I'm very proud to make my debut, but I know that, like, obviously, I have not, I've not done much in the game yet. Obviously, I want to, that's only pushing me on to do more. I'm just using my debut as motivation to hopefully get more minutes in the first team and hopefully get a couple of goals as well. We, we, we found out late that he was actually going to be on the bench, so we actually raced up to Leicester to, to get our seats, and then we made it just in time for kickoff. And we just had our eyes on him warming up throughout the whole half, first half, and, and then the second half. And then when the lights went out, we were like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen now. I don't think he's going to get on. And then when, when he did come on, yeah, we were just we were, yeah, we were over the moon. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was surreal, to be honest. Um, Jimmy's told me that Roy wants to see me. And then I've gone in to see him and he said he's really happy with me. And he's just like, he's thinking of pushing me into the first team soon, like sooner rather than later. It's a bit like a roller coaster. It's a bit up and down. <laughs> it's been... <laughs> been all over the place really. Yeah, like he said, he's, he's, he's played at three different levels this season. Um, the same principles apply at all levels. As long as he's working hard and, and, and enjoying the game and playing with a smile on his face, that's all that really matters for us really. But yeah, this is just a start, so we don't want to encourage him too much because obviously he, I know this is a long career that he's got ahead of him, so he's got to work hard and make sure that he gets many more starts. You know? Well, great to see Shaq's journey so far. And I think, as he says there, you know, there's still a long way to go. He knows he's still got a lot more effort to put in yet and a lot more grind to go. Um, Tommy, obviously having his dad involved in that VT as well. You, you know his dad from, from your playing time. Um, I want to ask you about what it's like as a dad, because obviously your son plays. You've, you've watched him play. Your dad would have watched you play here for Watford. Um, incredible. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not easy. And far back, as soon as I sit in there, I remembered him from when he was such a young lad. Uh, makes me feel really old. <laughs> um, but then I've watched his son make his professional debut in the FA Cup at Leicester as well, because I was there too. It, yeah, it, it's really difficult as a dad. I've got to say, I was there when my son scored his, his first league goal, and it was the best day of my life. Forget all of my football, forget it. So I can only imagine what my dad felt, but... I always think it's sometimes it's it's not an advantage to have your dad in the in the field, but he'll Shaq will be getting a lot of information off him, and you know most of it he should take on board because I know that all of the stuff that I say to Kelsey, half of it he should forget. <laughs> uh, Filippo, your your family, did you get lots of support from from your family at the start of your career? Well, from my from my father because he was uh, involved uh, in, in football, but in a no league uh, club. So he's always supported uh, my, my, my choices. So it was really easy to me uh, because both my father and my mother didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't make me any, any problems uh, uh, when uh, it was uh, the, the time to, 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 choose what to, to choose what to do. And I was... I, my, my, I had two sons, two boy, but they are not involved in football at all. Hmm. The, 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 the eldest one, uh, when he was uh, 20, is currently 35. <laughs> um, he, he didn't even know that Derby means Inter of Milan against AC Milan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, a, that's a sheltered it's, it's childhood. It's always about, about karate, kickboxing. Okay. And, uh, 
nice. that kind of sport. <laughs> nice, amazing. Well, family is obviously incredibly important, isn't it, as well? And uh, so we wish all the best for Shaq for his continued journey here with us at Watford. Right, time for Tommy's favourite part of the show. Uh, Filippo, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, it's when we get into the question side of things. Uh, we have a little quiz. It's called Ask Tommy. I'm going to ask him some questions. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you some questions a little bit later on in the show. Uh, and we'll do some fan questions after as well. Don't worry, Filippo, yours will be very easy and mine will be tremendously <laughs> difficult, so don't worry about it. We shall see. Okay, okay. question see. number one for you, Tommy, is this. Uh, which golf resort and hotel in Warwickshire has hosted the Ryder Cup four times? The Belfry. Correct. Point on the board. We always start with the golf question, uh, Filippo, to break him in nice and gently. Question two. Tonight's guest has won three Champions Leagues. But how many Serie A titles? Three, four, or five? Five. Five, correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Question three. Filippo represented Italy at the 1984 Olympic Games. But what was the host city that year? Was it A, Paris, B, LA, or C, Mexico? 84 was LA. It is, correct. Three points, Fantastic. well done. He's doing all right there, he's doing good. You're he's a lucky charm for me, Philip. <laughs> this, this is not me. the norm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your final question for the moment is, Filippo quite rightly holds a place in Milan's Hall of Fame, having made how many appearances? A, 325, B, 350, or C, 300? 325. 325. Is correct. He's got four out of four. Look at him rubbing. He's been on Google today. That's what's happened there, Filippo. No, He's it's been not. On Google. Yeah. It's just not. I know all about good players. Fantastic. Uh, right. Your questions will be a little bit later on the show, uh, Filippo. He's made it quite difficult, but don't panic. Uh, your questions have been tailored specifically for you. So fingers crossed a little bit later on. Um, but it's time for the fan questions now. These are the important ones. Um, so thank you so much if you sent one in already. Uh, still chance to do that, of course. We are live until 8 o'clock. So uh, your questions, comment section below on YouTube, Twitter, at Watford FC. Use the hashtag of Inside the Hive. Okay, first question uh, for you, Filippo, is this. Um, what was your best moment at Watford? Ooh. Certainly, when uh, uh, when uh, I arrived uh, for the first time to Watford, to Vicarage Road, uh, I met uh, the, the people of the club. Uh, that was to me really uh, an important uh, an important moment. I, I felt home si since the beginning. Nice. That, the question was from uh, Ollie. Thank you very much, Ollie. Uh, Jenny has the next question. What's the favourite moment of your whole career? I'm sure there's plenty to choose from. Well, probably when we won the, um, the, the final in Athens uh, um, against Barcelona for 4-0. Uh, it was the third champion, Champions League, but it was the first that I played uh, in, the, in the first 11. Uh, so that was uh, probably uh, the best moment, even if uh, even the first uh, win uh, of, of the Italian Championship was really great because uh, we won in Como. No, we draw in Como, but we won the championship. And uh, with the bus, we went till uh, San Siro, uh, crowded of our supporters. So amazing. All these are amazing. Yeah, amazing moments. We're amazing moments. Incredible. Uh, thank you very much, Jenny, for your question. Uh, Jamie has the next one. He'd like to know who is the hardest player that you ever came up against? So your toughest opponent. Don't include well, me in this. No, no. <laughs> Tommy Mooney is there. He's over, he's over there. Tommy Mooney. <laughs> and then uh, by Diego Maradona. Wow. But even I'm Zico. happy to, I'm so happy Mooney, to take, go underneath. Mooney, Diego, and then Zico. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, what, what was so hard about Diego Maradona? Cause, you know, we, we know how incredible he was as a footballer, but to defend uh, because, against him? Uh, it was, of, of course... Uh, it, if uh, you let him face uh, in front of you with the ball in, on his feet, it's, it's uh, impossible, was impossible to, to stop him. So you have to try to anticipate him. But what is unbelievable that uh, when you run next to, to him, he uh, was such strong, no? not only uh, good in, in the, on his feet, with his feet, 
but was all also very strong in uh, um, keep uh, you away from him. Wow, sounds just like you, Tommy. <laughs> very similar, <laughs> very, very similar. He just had more hair. That's the only difference, <laughs> Filippo. Uh, final fan question for the moment. And uh, again, I think this is, uh, I think the names that you could possibly say right now is going to be incredible. But uh, who is your best ever teammate? Uh, ever teammate. Uh, mm, it's difficult to say, pick one, isn't it? So give give yeah, us your best three. Give us your best three. But okay, uh, to uh, to remember him and um, Ray Wilkins. Ray Wilkins oh, wow. was uh, yeah. to me uh, fantastic. I was uh, I was uh, young when we we moved to AC Milan, and I also met him here in at Watford. But was really a, a, a great person to me. Wow, amazing. Incredible. Um, thank you very much for your questions so far. Keep those coming in. We've got another chance to have your questions a little bit later on in the show. Now, of course, when it comes to America, there's only one man who represents Watford out there. And there was a recent fan convention over at Green Bay. There's only one man we could send, and it was Jay Demerit. What's up guys and welcome to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Watford fans, you guys all know that I'm from Green Bay, home of the Green Bay Packers, but we are here for a special reason today, to adopt the first ever Green Bay Watford supporters group in my hometown. Looking forward to an awesome day. I'm here with my mother, uh, who has been my greatest supporter my whole life. Mom, I want to know. I want to know about your first time you came into Vicarage Road. Tell me about the first time you were in the stadium. What did that feel like as, a, as an American you know, mom, like in an English stadium? You know, it really was fun, and it was fun to go to Vicarage Road because families were there, just like in Lambeau Field, from little up to grandpas and grandmas. It was awesome because they were welcoming to us. Somehow they knew that we were from America and they just hugged us and made them feel like we were a Watford family, just like we were a Lambo family. Community so, first, community first. Yes. Well, that's a wrap. Not the result we wanted, not the three points we wanted. Survival is still a little bit hard to find right now, but the amount of people that showed up today, the Green Bay faithful, as they always do, coming to support the community. What a pleasure to see the multi-generations of Green Bay fans that are now hopefully going to be Watford fans. Thank you all for coming. Till the next time. Well, there we go. Always good to see uh, Jay representing the club in America. Great to see you, but Jay, what are you wearing? <laughs> what are you wearing, Skip? <laughs> hey, well, we've got one lined up for you next week. Nice little, nice little jacket for you. I just feel like I've gone so boring. I've, I've gone for black because somebody said it was slimming. It's not. <laughs> but Jay, Jay that is, that's brilliant, mate. Bring it over next time you come. Love that. Tommy would, Tommy would like one, so send one over, Jay. Uh, right, time now for another 60-second challenge. Uh, Tommy's clinging on to a promotion place uh, in our 60-second challenge. Up this week is Jeremy Ngakia. Studs or blades? Studs. Penalty shootout in a final, would you go first or last? Last. Last-minute winner or hat-trick? Hat-trick. Worst thing about pre-season? Running. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. Text message or phone call? Text. Childhood hero? Ronaldo. Home games or away games? Home. Skiing or snowboarding? Ski. Favourite movie? Power. First football boots? Mercurials. Football manager or FIFA? FIFA. Red sauce or brown? Red. Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Favourite food? Noodles. 
PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Team you supported as a kid? <laughs> Say that again. Team you supported as a kid? Arsenal. 30 yard screamer or solo goal? 30 yard screamer. Favourite holiday destination? Greece. Favourite TV series? Disney Channel. Ice bath or cryo chamber? Cryo chamber. Could have got more if I didn't. <laughs> that Arsenal one, I didn't hear you properly. Tommy, you got close to you, one point away. I'm still hanging on in there in seventh, but I need somebody to be de deducted points, which is quite fashionable this season, <laughs> but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know. We'll see. We, we might give you another chance the last game of the season. We threatened it, haven't we? We certainly have. Uh, right then, time to look at your career and your life here at Watford, uh, Filippo. I'm looking forward to this. Um, let's look at your stats, first of all, because uh, these numbers are absolutely incredible. Obviously, your playing career, uh, AC Milan, the big name that really stands out there as well. 521 yeah, appearances, nine goals as well. And then we go to the next page, which I think is a record anyone would be delighted to have just one of these awards five Serie A's you've won the uh, Supercoppa Italia one two three four times you've won the Champions League three times UEFA Super Cup three times and the Intercontinental Cup winner twice um, not a bad career hey Filippo but I had fantastic teammates <laughs> I was really lucky to play with such a big players and I try to do my best uh, with them but it uh, was really unbelievable the quality of the players at uh, Milan and at, uh, that, uh, that, at that times. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I started uh, at the beginning with Luther and I want to give my regards to him please uh, uh, to Luther Blissett uh, was with us uh, at the beginning my first season in uh, uh, in, uh, with AC Milan in the first team uh, and to me Luther was a good player even if uh, a good player he, he didn't play so bad he was much better than the people tell about his story in AC Milan his year his season in AC Milan and, and not because he's a friend of mine but uh, uh, he was really uh, a player committed he was really a player that worked hard for the for the for the for the team and to me it was an example to he set as an example to me Filippo, you in some of those teams where you've had so much success you've played with some of the the legends of the game do you still stay in touch and and speak about the old times and and, and what they're doing now well, we, we are we, with some of them. I'm still in touch with uh, Mauro Tassotti, Franco Baresi, and uh, Roberto Donadoni, and sometimes with also other players that, that uh, uh, sometimes with Marcel Desai as well, and Boban uh, Savicevic. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, 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 a lot of time has passed. But uh, we are still, uh, it's like to be friends forever. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it in a different way, but... Uh, I know exactly what we, you mean. I know yeah, exactly what yeah. you mean. The players that you have success with, you, you, you might not see them for a year or two years, but when you see them, you, it's, you know, it's exactly, a, a big exactly hug and it brings the, the good memories back, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. Uh, Philippe, let's talk about your time here at Watford then. How did, how did that come about? Obviously, Viali was manager, but, but tell us how you arrived on English shores and here at Watford. Uh, well, I, I was contacted by uh, Nicola Caricola, who was at that time uh, uh, working for, uh, for uh, Viali, I think, or, or for the club, I don't know, probably for Viali. And he was asking me about Iglitare, that is current today is the director of uh, Lazio, sport director of Lazio. Uh, he was a central uh, a, a center forward. And they asked me about him because he was with me in Brescia. At that time, I was playing for Brescia. And then the end of the, of the call, I, I told uh, Nicola, Nicola, if you are looking for a central defender, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, uh, we're just uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to be fun, no? And okay, I, I went on holiday and then uh, Viali called me up asking to, to join Watford. 
So I anticipated my uh, my return to, to to Italy, and then I, fl I flew directly to to London and then to to Fuji in Italy, where we had our precision, and uh, we didn't discuss anything. Uh, it was I was really happy to join uh, to join uh, Watford. Hmm. Was it always a dream of yours to play in England and, and play the British game? Yeah, I I always been attracted by the atmosphere. Uh, uh, the first game I I I, I watched in in, uh, in in England was Coventry. No, was QPR Coventry, and then later on I I. I knew that in that game, Hathley was playing, uh, uh, Mark Hathley was playing for, uh, for Coventry. And uh, Hathley later on moved to, to AC Milan. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I don't know the, the reason I was so, I've been always attracted to, to the, from, to the, from the English football. But, uh, well, uh, I, I remember when I was young, I, I, have in, I had in my mind uh, players such as uh, Mike Shannon, uh, uh, some other players, but I, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know, but uh, now I'm, uh, I'm a fan of, uh, of English football. Every, every, every category, you know, from Premiership till uh, the, the lowest league. Filippo, how, how did you find the contrast in the cultures moving from, from playing in Italy to, to coming to England? I played in Spain for a little spell at the end of my career and mm -hmm. I found it really almost contrasting. It was so difficult and to get used to a different format. How did you, how, how did you settle into English uh, football? At, at, the, at the beginning it was really hard because uh, the, the intensity was always uh, high intensity. There was, but during the, the match and but also during the, 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 the training session, even if I was used to work hard because when with Saki, we really, uh, Saki, uh, the manager, we really work hard at AC Milan. But uh, here in England, the, the, the intensity of the game and the, even the, the, the opponents were really tough, no? you know? Usually the defender should be uh, the one who kicked the the ass of the the striker <laughs> like you, <laughs> and when I came to England, I was like, oh my God, here is not that easy. <laughs> I also met before moving to England, uh, Mark Hartley uh, with the under twenty one national team, and uh, so I I I, I knew that uh, in England it was uh, it would have been tough to play. Uh, but uh, in in a few games, I I, I got used to, to it, uh, and so uh, it, and so I I try to do to do my best, to be focused, uh, training at my at my at my best day day after day, because uh, when you are 38, 39, uh, you, you need to train uh, and to 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 have a, a core style, style life. life. You mentioned... Style, style of life. <laughs> yeah, no, Sorry. for sure. No, that's good. Cool. Filippo, you mentioned earlier on, well, maybe it wasn't the season that you kind of hope, hoped it would be performance-wise on the pitch. We got some footage of, of the last time you were here at Vicarage Road and you got an amazing reception here and the fans absolutely adore yeah. you. Um, what, what does it mean to you, the fans, the relationship with the fans and the reaction you got on that day? Well, well, to me, it was unbelievable. No, you can see I was crying because uh, it was really an emotion. Uh, I was with, also with Tommy Smith, another legend of this club, and I, I, I had the, the I, I've been so lucky to play with him, and I, I, it was an, unexpected to me. You no, know? just one season, this important season, but the people clapped, clapped uh, to me, and it was. Uh, uh, Unbelievable, unbelievable. Honestly, honestly. Mm. Um, thank you, thank you again, <laughs> thank you again. Uh, I, think, I think the fans absolutely loved that season you were here. Obviously, it was just that one year. Do, do you wish you'd kind of maybe come to England a little bit earlier and played in the English leagues for longer? Yeah, if only, <laughs> if only. Uh, I, I, I would have loved to be to be in England a, a few years before. Even if, uh, for example, when I left uh, 
uh, from AC Milan, I moved to Reggio Emilia, and then to Brescia, where I played for five seasons. Uh, well, of course, to me, that clubs at that moment were like AC Milan, were the most important club to me. But if I could turn back time, I, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, choose to, to, to move to England before. But probably, but probably I was not good enough to, for, or good uh, in the way the English football needs to be. It's all about opportunity though, isn't it? When, it, when the move yeah. comes around. Filippo, tell us about the role that you have now at Parma. Um, I'm the head of uh, the methodological area. So we, uh, we try to give to all the, 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 the teams of the academy the same style of play. Uh, we try to uh, uh, to give them uh, um, advices uh, and control uh, the, the 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 training section, uh, and also we try to accompany the the talents uh, to develop as uh, as professional players. We have many players from from abroad, uh, and uh, also players from different regions. So. We we have them in our uh, um, in our uh, boarding boarding school, and it's for, to them is not is not that easy because when you when you move from your country or from your region, you left uh, parents, you left uh, uh, you left friends, uh, and you lose a bit your identity. So we try to help them to rebuild their identity to connect them uh, to the community, uh, which is really important to be involved into the community, just to uh, share the values of the community and so the values of the club. Yeah, Matthew, uh, it's great to, see you, uh, great to see you still involved in football. And I know the mark you left on Watford is certainly one that the fans really, really appreciate today. So, um, yeah, th thank you for being part of that history. Although it was only a season, um, I know it's something the fans really, really appreciate. And of course, that reaction that you got when you came here last. So uh, yeah, no, really appreciate you sharing your memories of, of your time here. Uh, right, still not gonna let you go just yet though, because we've got a little bit of fun. Your questions are coming up in just a moment, but of course, there's lots coming up at the club this weekend, as we've already alluded to, two massive games. And of course, it, Hornets Junior Fun Day is coming up on Sunday here at the Vicarage Road Stadium as part of the uh, the Golden Girls game as they take on Coventry United. Uh, JuniorHornets.WatfordFC.com Com, uh, if you want to get involved in that, would be great. You can sign up today and claim a free ticket for that game. And also, of course, if you're one of our Junior Hornets, go to the website. There's lots of great things you can get involved in there, from giveaways to the membership packs to the away days as well. JuniorHornets.WatfordFC.com And if you fancy a bit of a bargain in the club shop, you can get a home shirt if you want to be wearing the yellow, the gold and the, the black of Watford this weekend. £25 for adult junior is just £20. Shop.WatfordFC.com now you can get your hands on the retro kit as well. We all have a good retro kit. The Herald and Post kit is available online and in store. And as we mentioned, of course, the big game on Saturday here at Vicarage Road is Watford versus Burnley. Three o'clock kickoff. If you're coming to the game, we look forward to seeing you here. Make some noise, get behind the boys. And as always, Tommy is going to be on commentary and you can stay tuned to all the club channels for exclusive build-up and reaction to that game. Okay, Filippo. Tommy scored four points uh, from his four questions. The good news is there is a tiebreaker question, which uh, I think we're going to need because I have all my faith in you and faith in my questioning that I have not uh, made this too difficult, uh, which is always my aim for our guests. So question one, you scored one goal for Watford. Who was it against? Walsall. Correct. One point on the board. Ooh. Well done. <laughs> Question two, in which season did you win your first Serie A title with AC Milan? Uh, oh my God, uh, 1987-1988. Correct, two points on the board, well done. Uh, question, I, I, <laughs> question three I'm is going, about... I'm going old, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, Tommy was the top goal scorer the season before you arrived. But how many goals did Tommy score that season? Was it 15, 19 or 21? 
Help me, Tommy, please. <laughs> how many? Uh, you, how, 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 okay, I think uh, 21. 21, Tommy? I think it was 21. If it, if it wasn't, I'd just stitched Philip up. <laughs> well, uh, 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 how many goals did you score in your... Uh, <laughs> according to Soccer Base, it's 19, but you've said 21. We're going to give you the point because Tommy has said it's 21 I'm sure it and he 21. helped you on that. So Tommy's going to take 21. I, I don't, I don't, I, okay, thank you, Tommy. I don't we'll in, sure we'll include his pre-season goals. It's all right. 21, <laughs> you've got three points. Uh, your final question. In the 1994 Champions League final, you famously won 4-0 versus Barcelona. But which French international that went on to play for Chelsea scored your fourth goal? Oh, well, Marcel Desailly. Correct. Four Correct. out of four. Well done. We go to a tiebreaker. <laughs> now, Filippo, normally I like to give Tommy a distance question where I'll ask him how far it is from this seat to AC Milan. But I know he would have Googled that today because he's gotten clever to my questioning. Which is uh, true. I did, I did Google it. It's, it's 906 miles <laughs> to the San Siro. <laughs> Not according to my map. Only joking. Uh, right, so we're going to have a bit of fun. Uh, obviously, Gianluca Vialli brought you to Watford, but there are six teams that he has put a shirt on for. There are six teams in total, if you go on to his appearances, that he has played for. I would like you, taking turns, to name the six teams that Gianluca Vialli has put on Me? a shirt Me? for. Uh, well, we're going to go one by one. I'm going to let Tommy go first, and then you'll get to go second. Whoever can't give me an answer first will lose. Uh, so effectively, as soon as you give me a wrong answer, you're out. So Tommy, I'm going to come to you first. Jean-Luc Vialli, a team that he has pulled on a shirt for. Chelsea. Don't Google. Chelsea is correct. <laughs> no, go no Googling, Filippo. Chelsea is correct. Filippo, okay. next to you. Uh, um, Juventus, Juventus. Correct. Juventus. Tommy, back to you. <laughs> Sampdoria. Correct. Correct. Filippo, ball's back in your court. A team. Uh, I'm not Cremonese. saying club. Cremonese. Cremonese. Correct. I would never have got that. I would <laughs> never impressive. have got that one. I like that. So. Am I allowed Italy? You are allowed Italy. Correct. Now, I feel really bad it's got to this one, Filippo, because this is, this is like the really, really tough one. Uh, another team that he has played for. So, we've gone through the clubs. There's internationals, but... How else may you have played? I don't understand, sorry. Uh, okay, Tom, Tommy Mooney is the winner. <laughs> yeah, I feel really bad because I wasn't expecting Tommy to get this many right. <laughs> because the other answer is Italy under 21s because it's a team ah, well. he's played oh, for, well. which again see, is poor for me. We probably play a couple of games together, yeah. 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 No, no, I have to sure. deal with this every week, Philip Boy. It's just once a season for you now. <laughs> every week I have to deal with these questions. Tommy, you've actually won a game of Ask Tommy. Thank you very much. I take, I take great pride in it. <laughs> Philip, I'm, not, I'm not going to pretend I didn't want to win. I did want to win. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you are the winner. And uh, next time I come to England, I'll be your caddy. Oh, be my caddy. That's the Absolutely. prize for you. That's, that's <laughs> our deal. You come and caddy for me and I'll take you for dinner. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Filippo, uh, just by before... The way, sorry, one. sorry. Don't let me... I just received today this. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much from the club. Today. Oh, amazing. Afternoon. Oh, that's yeah, perfect. With, with Gibbo, Gibbo, no? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> incredible. Okay. Oh, that's, today, I'm glad you got that today. Oh, perfect. Just before we let you go, we've just got a final few fan questions, Filippo. I don't want to keep you too much longer because I know we've gone past 8 o'clock already, uh, but it's amazing having you on the show. Um, Karen would like to know, uh, which of your Watford teammates impressed you the most when you signed for the club? Uh, Tommy Smith. Yeah. Tommy Smith. Nice. Peter would like to know, are you still in touch with anyone from Watford? Obviously, you mentioned some of the great names that, that you keep in contact from your well, time at Milan, but for Watford? Well, we met uh, with, uh, with uh, I met Tommy the last time I was in London, and we are in contact uh, through, through WhatsApp sometimes. And uh, with Gibo, who is in, uh, still in Belgium, is, is coaching there. And then uh, with Alec Chamberlain, we had uh, not, not uh, last year, I think. Then I can, 
Ah, okay, with the crazy man, Patrick Blondeau. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, love and, that. Uh, oh, sorry if I forgot. Okay, Luther, of course, Luther, but even if uh, not yeah, with me. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I, well, no, that's that's it. Uh, okay, with the, I text with the, um, Coxie. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Coxie, yes. And, yeah. Nice. Next question comes from Andy. Uh, which was your favourite stadium to play in when you were in England? Uh, well, apart from uh, Vicarage Road, mm -hmm. Main Road. Okay, Man City's old ground. Yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And I was. I remember. The, the, I, I was uh, the captain of Watford, and uh, I, I remember uh, the first game we lost three 0 Okay, but I was really excited to be into the, the the changing room of the of the referee with the legend uh, such as Keegan and the the, the captain of City at the time was a how do you call it a psycho no uh -huh. Stuart Pierce sure. yeah 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 Stuart Pierce uh, yeah to me it was uh, unbelievable <laughs> wow. yeah incredible incredible um really would like to know what is your favorite goal that you scored uh, with the Walsall, the Walsall one. <laughs> no, in my career, how, about, how about your whole career? No, yeah, the, the first, the, the, the first I scored in, uh, in San Siro. I scored nice. the three, three. <laughs> so the, four, the, the first was fantastic. Amazing. Uh, and the fantastic. final question uh, comes from Charlie. Would you like to ever go into management? Of course, you're doing the, the methodology things now, but is, is management ever something you'd be interested in? No, I, I was a, I've been a coach. At the beginning of my career, when I when I left, uh, uh, when I, when I re got retired, and then I coached for four season at the under 19 for two season for two season I was the assistant of Franco Baresi, and then I was the head coach of under 19. Then I moved uh, with the first team with Ancelotti and Tassotti in his staff, and then uh, I was appointed as a director of the of the youth sector of AC Milan and from that moment I stopped thinking about uh, be a coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, Filippo, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I feel like we've only really no. scratched the surface. No. We, could, we could speak with you for hours on, on your career no. and bits and pieces. But, but thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Thank and, you, Filippo. Uh, and uh, all the best for the men, the Burley, and uh, for women uh, against Coventry. Okay, we wish you all the best, guys. Amazing. Top man. Thank Filippo, you. Thank, thank you so you much. Man. Thank great you so much. Uh, oh. Tommy, thank you. Oh, thank you so much to you, as always, as well, Tommy. Great to What a great guest. Great guest. Incredible. So nice to speak to him and converse like that. Last time we were together, we were trying to elbow each other. So it was much, much more comfortable tonight. And what we'll do is I'll get the team to clip up where he compares you and Maradona on the same, same graph <laughs> like that. Uh, thank you very much to you, as always, for all your questions. We can't do this show without you. So thank you so much for being involved tonight. If you come into the games at the weekend, whether it's to support the Golden Girls or, of course, the men on Saturday, we need your support. Get behind the two teams. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.